Hey y'all, I'm Val from Our Forever Farm. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're doing another one of Linda's recipes out of her cookbook. So today we're making a strawberry cobbler. Now this is her mama's recipe and I wanna read you in her mama's words. Mix together fresh strawberries, one and a quarter to one and a half cups of sugar, depending on sweetness, four tablespoons of flour, or omit if you prefer thin filling. Place in 11 by nine by two Pyrex dish. Dot with half a stick of margarine. And I did buy margarine for that. And y'all know me, I don't buy margarine. Top with pastry from a stiff biscuit dough. And we know how to make biscuits here, don't we? So you use Crisco, buttermilk, and self-rising flour to make the biscuits. We can do that. Roll and cut in strips. Sprinkle sugar on top. Mama said a handful. That's what Linda put. Dot with butter and bake in preheated oven. Sometimes Mama would heat berries, sugar, and butter just enough to melt the sugar before putting in the pan. I think that's what we're gonna do. Do not cook or get too hot because the crust will sink and the berries will lose their flavor. Bake at 375 for 35 to 45 minutes. So we're gonna to try to do this, like Mama said. So I noticed she didn't say how many berries. I don't think she did. Let me look again. So, mix together fresh berries. That's all she says. So, I bought a big package of them. We'll probably use about half since it's just me and Sweet Hunter here. So there's nothing like fresh strawberries to me. I love them. You can use them in so many desserts. You want to make sure and wash them really well. So I just take my strawberries that I've just washed and I lay them on a towel. And then I usually just cover them up for a few minutes and let it soak up the moisture. So now they're dry and I'm just cutting the stems off, looking for bad spots, cutting them in half. These were big strawberries and just cull out the ones that weren't good. I'm looking so forward to my family coming here to the cabin at our forever farm and being together and having Easter lunch. This would be a great cobbler to make for Easter. Now I'm actually not making this for Easter. I'm making it before Easter. Well, that's what I got out of that. So it's a perfect size, but it's just not quite time for strawberries yet. I mean, it will be soon, but they weren't that great. But these right here are good. So I have bought margarine and it says to use half a stick. So I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna get my flour and my sugar out and we're gonna go to town on this. What I'm doing is I'm just getting all my ingredients out half a stick of margarine, and she did say margarine. So I went ahead and get a pan out, because I think what I'm gonna do is heat it up like she said. Let's see what Mama said. She said, Mama would add heat berries, sugar, and butter, just enough to melt the sugar before putting in the pan. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the berries, the sugar, and the butter in the pan and I'm gonna heat it up on the stove. Just barely. This is a one third cup. I'm on, it, it, no, one half cup. So it calls for one and a quarter or one and a half. Of course, I'm gonna do one and a half. So this is half sugar, I didn't say. <laughs> a cup of sugar. and a half a sugar, and I think I just spilled it. But it's on the cutting board, so it'll be easy to clean. Then I am going to, this half a stick of butter, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up and put it in the pan. And I'm just gonna warm this all on the stove until the sugar dissolves, so you can see what it looks like. Now I would say that you have to watch this pretty close because it is sugar, berries, and butter, and you don't want to burn it. 
I'm gonna clean my mess up over here and then, I, and I'm gonna watch this real close. So if you're just learning to cook, if you're somebody that's just learning to cook and don't really understand, you don't walk away from a stove. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so just a spoiler alert, this cobbler ended up being so good and her mama is right it is the best cobbler in the world that's what she put at the top i'm telling you i sent some home with my daughter and my son-in-law called me the next morning and i've never heard him talk about any of my food like he did this one it was really delicious you've got to try it so i hear it sizzling just a little bit so i turned it down and i'm gonna stir it just a little bit and we're just gonna dissolve this butter dissolve this sugar and the butter. So once that butter starts melding, it'll give it some, um, I guess you could say liquid in there. And the juice of the strawberries, you know, a good way to get the juice of the strawberries is to let your strawberries sit in the sugar a few minutes, a little while, and it will make its own juice but this is a quicker way to do it. So I'm just gonna do it until the sugar kinda dissolves, not all the way, but just kinda dissolves. I kinda th thought that was a good idea. So it's just about there. Now, I'm gonna turn this eye off I'm gonna make my biscuits real quick. Y'all saw me make biscuits a hundred times. I'm gonna do the white lily biscuits because her mama says, let's see, how did she put it? Well, we'll go ahead and put it in the Pyrex dish. And she, and she said dot with a half a stick of margarine, but see, we put it in the pan. And um, she says, top it with a pastry made from a stiff biscuit dough. So she said, use Crisco, buttermilk and self-rising flour. To me, that's white lily biscuits. And I do have white lily flour. I hadn't bought Crisco in years because it's expensive. So I, they're all expensive. I'm gonna use just the off-brand shortening, but, and I do have buttermilk. So this will be the white lily biscuit recipe that I'm gonna make. I will link the video on how to make those down in the description box. Y'all like my shirt? Looks like it's all wrinkled but Georgia gal. <laughs> so I've got several of these. I don't think it's gonna take as big a pan as she said. Let's see. She said 11 by nine by two, which would probably be this big one, but I don't think I have enough strawberries to do that. So I'm gonna use this middle one right here. My daughter gave me these dishes and I love them. I think they're so pretty. Let me rinse this off. spray pan just because just to be safe I don't like things to stick in the pan I don't like to wash dishes and scrub them so we are gonna take this and I didn't I didn't melt it all the way but you can see it does have a syrup the butter is still some of it is still there I didn't heat it too much because she did say not to heat it too much so all we're doing here is just pouring the strawberries into the dish. I hope that's not too big of a dish. If I had used all those strawberries, it'd probably be good. But half of them wasn't good. So I'm just getting all this juice and sugar out of here. And she said to dot that, when you put it in the Pyrex dish, dot it with butter well we've already done that and heated it so we're gonna set this aside and i'm gonna make the biscuits real quick or the biscuit dough and i'm just doing the i started to say i'm doing the two ingredient biscuit i'm so used to doing that because it's the easiest one i'm gonna do the white lily flour because she said flour crisco and buttermilk and that's white lily's recipe so i'm gonna make that real quick it'll be easy
And preheat your oven to 375. 375. Let me go do that. About, I about forgot to match star. I am so not used to this these ovens, but I do like them, so that's a good thing. Um, okay, let me get the biscuit stuff, and we'll make the biscuit dough. So I make my biscuits with my hands. I'm gonna take my rings off real quick, and um, set them right there. And if you don't wanna make them with your hands, you can make them with one of those pastry cutters or something like that. So, if I remember right, the white lily flour biscuits are two cups of flour, and this is white lily flour. Oh yeah, y'all don't let me forget to put flour in there. Those berries too, that's what make it, makes it thick. It says if you don't want a thick uh, juice in there, not to put it in there, but I will put some in there. So that's two cups of flour. And then it costs for a fourth a cup of Crisco shortening or, or any shortening. So I just kind of guess at it. I'm used to making biscuits all the time. And I need to go ahead and open this up. Or Sweet Hunter when you need him, right? And now I gotta close it because I need to shake it real good. Whoops. I told y'all I'm a messy cook. Okay, what I do is I just, on the white lily, I just basically, I just do the shortening like this until it forms like little pieces, like pea size pieces. And I just do it with my hands. You can do it with a pastry blender if you're not comfortable doing it with your hands. It's what uh, Sweet Hunter's granny did. I watched her and learned how. So, and that's about the way you want it. Where, you, can you see the little pea, like little pea slices? You'll see them in here. Just little pea slices of the shortening. I hope y'all can see that. And then, I usually just make a little well, and it, I think it calls for almost a cup. I'm gonna do about three fourths of a cup to wash my hands real quick, and I'll use a spoon for the rest of the way. Four tablespoons of flour. We have not done that. Let's do that real quick. Four tablespoons of flour. Y'all, I still don't know where things are in this house. I'm learning. So that's two tablespoons. Let's see if we can find one tablespoon. So I got my sifter because sometimes when you put flour into the berries, it might be lumpy and we don't want lumpy flour, pieces of flour in the berries. The berries are probably still just a little bit warm. So I sift it in here. I count the four tablespoons out. I sift it into the strawberries and just stir it up really good. I see a few lumps when I do this, but the lumps are from the butter that's not melted. But this works out really, really good. And I like a thicker juice in my berries. So I did add this. So I hope I'm not confusing you by doing biscuits and then cobbler and everything, but I didn't want to put the flour in. I'm so thankful for families and friends. I'm thankful for bunnies and Easter eggs and just the gathering together and having fun and fellowship and the food. But most of all, I want to wish you happy Resurrection Day. Happy Easter. I hope you take this opportunity to love your family, love on them, appreciate them. Don't take any day for granted. And I want to thank the Lord most of all that he gave his only son just for me, just for you, and Jesus died on that old rugged cross, and then he rose again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We're going to stir the buttermilk into the Crisco, the shortening, and the white lily flour mixture. 
mixture. Can't talk this morning. And we're gonna make a stiff biscuit dough. So you can make any biscuit recipe that you have for this. I'm sure she just said Crisco buttermilk and self-rising flour. So I thought, hmm, that sounds like white lily uh, biscuits. Now you can use any brand of flour. I know a lot of you can't get white lily flour and it's just my preference. But she says to roll it out and cut it in strips yep. and then sprinkle sugar on top. Mama said a handful. Now, when I make my biscuits, and especially the two-ingredient biscuits, I always uh, cut those out. Now, my white lilies, I usually roll out by hand, but I don't know why. Just, just preference, just used to, used to it. But if you notice, I don't need my biscuits. I fold them, and then I pat them out and cut them. But today, we're going to actually use a rolling pin. We're going to roll our dough out, and then cut it in strips. And I love recipes from older uh, women, from older generations. I don't know how old Linda's mama was when she put, when Linda put this in the cookbook, but I love it. And it's such an easy recipe. And I do go a little slow because I'm just trying to teach younger women. And I hope and pray that somebody's listening out there. If you are, let me know. So I used a pizza cutter to cut my strips. It just makes it easy for me. But you can use a knife or whatever you have. Just uh, cut your strips the size you think they're going to uh, go into your pan. Just guess at it. And if they stick to the board like mine are doing here, just lay them out in the strips. I promise they will cook all together. We're not looking for perfection here. We're looking for good. We're looking for good food for our family. It's all about family, faith, and friends. Now there's the strips long ways. Now I cut them just a little bit shorter and put them on the top just like this. This is just about ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to use the rest of that stick of butter. I know she said only half of, half of a stick or did she say half of a cup? Let's just read it again. Half of a stick. I'm gonna use the whole stick because we're using that dough and, and it did say to dot it on top of the cobbler. So it'll be good with melted butter on that biscuit dough. So let's place it in the oven now for, let's see, what did it say? 35 to 45 minutes. So I've got it set for 35 minutes and we'll check it and see how it looks. Oops, I forgot to put the sugar on it. Remember, we're supposed to sprinkle like a handful on top of it. So, we'll just open this up real quick. And sprinkle a handful on top. That'll make a difference. It'll be good. So it's been 35 minutes exactly, and my cobbler looks wonderful, I think. It smells so good, those fresh strawberries and that juice with that sugar and that butter on top. I mean, how can you beat this? Oh my goodness. I can't wait to taste this. I'm going to let it cool just a little bit before I do. I am so thankful that I met Linda and that she thought enough of me to come to my mama's visitation when my mama passed away. I love this. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? It's just beautiful.
the taste test. It's really warm. I know it's gonna be good. It looks so good. I'm gonna serve it with ice cream and maybe whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Strawberries, whipped cream, ice cream sounds good to me. Oh my goodness. That tastes just like my grandmother's strawberry cobbler. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. You know, we get so used to making things quick, and I do that quickie cobbler all the time with the milk, the flour, the sugar, and the butter. This is delicious. I poured some of that strawberry juice over it. So good. Mmm. Y'all need to make this. Mm. I'll put this, the recipe in the description box if I didn't tell you. Hey, thank y'all for joining me. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy doing these videos for you. It's fun. I really appreciate y'all that watch, and I appreciate y'all that comment. It means a lot to me. Hey, as we always say, y'all go cook something.